We are excited to be making our very first set of predictions for OCR GCSE Psychology. Now, this year we're expanding our support to help even more students with their revision and exam prep. And Laura, our Head of Psychology, has carefully analysed the trends and patterns that have emerged in past OCR exams. She's done an in-depth review of the topics and questions that have appeared in previous seasons and has used this information to create psychology predicted papers specific for this year. Now, to access these predicted papers, all you need to do is follow the link in the description below. And alongside these papers, Laura's also created video walkthroughs for both papers so you can see exactly what a top band answer looks like in psychology. These videos will guide you through the skills needed to interpret questions, understand what's being asked and structure your responses effectively. You'll encounter questions designed in the same style as those you'll see in your exams, enabling you to break down the questions, identifying what needs to be included in your answers and how to structure them. This will help you feel confident and fully prepared when you sit the real exam. Remember to revise all topics as these are just predictions. We don't have any additional information or insights into the actual exams. We have not seen the real papers. Now, we know for paper one, studies and applications in psychology one, there are four sections in the paper. That's development, criminal psychology, psychological problems and research methods. And we'll go through each of these topics and things within these topics that you'll want to look over. You can use the timestamps in the description to jump to the section you're interested in, or you can just sit back and listen. And then we'll obviously go through paper two as well. Let's start with development. Within development, look at concepts of object permanence, animism and egocentrism. With object permanence, be prepared to define this concept, which is the understanding that objects continue to exist even when they cannot be seen, heard or touched. Know how Piaget demonstrated this in his sensory motor stage and be ready to discuss its significance in early cognitive development. Same with animism, be able to explain this concept, which is the belief that inanimate objects have lifelike qualities and are capable of action. It's a key feature of the pre-operational stage. Be prepared to discuss examples like a child believing that a doll can feel emotions. Then with egocentrism, understand how this refers to a child's inability to see a situation from another person's point of view. Know how Piaget illustrated this in his Three Mountains task and be ready to evaluate the concept considering strengths like its empirical support and limitations such as the underestimation of children's social cognition. Still on development, we have Piaget 1952 with his study into conservation of number. Be familiar with the aim of Piaget's study, which was to investigate whether children understand that quantity remains the same even when the appearance of an object changes. Know the procedure. Piaget showed children two identical rows of counters and then spread out one row asking if there were the same number of counters in each row. Be ready to describe the findings. Younger children under seven typically said the spread out row had more counters, indicating a lack of conservation. Older children around seven plus understood that the number of counters remained the same. And of course, understand the conclusion. Piaget concluded that the ability to conserve develops as children enter the concrete operational stage around seven. For the evaluation, you want to prepare strengths like the study's pioneering role in understanding cognitive development and limitations such as its reliance on language and lack of ecological validity. Next, look at IQ tests as a measure of intelligence. Be ready to define IQ tests and understand how they are used to measure cognitive abilities. Know the strengths, such as providing a standardised measure of cognitive abilities and limitations like cultural bias and the inability to capture multiple intelligences or creativity. Be prepared to evaluate the effectiveness of IQ tests as a tool for measuring intelligence and the application in educational settings. And just the final thing for development is application of learning theories to the development of education. Dweck's mindsets. Be familiar with Dweck's theory, which distinguishes between a fixed mindset, believing intelligence is static, and a growth mindset, believing intelligence can be developed. Understand how this theory applies to educational settings, promoting perseverance and resilience in learning. Be ready to discuss strengths like its positive impact on student motivation and limitations such as difficulties in changing established mindsets. Willingham's ideas on teaching through meaning. Know Willingham's emphasis on teaching that focuses on understanding rather than rote memorisation. Be prepared to discuss his suggestions for applying cognitive science to education, such as encouraging problem solving and critical thinking. Evaluation should include strengths like the practical applicability of his strategies and the strong evidence base alongside limitations such as the challenges in implementing these strategies in diverse classroom environments. Our next topic is criminal psychology. Look at the role of vicarious reinforcement in social learning. 
Be prepared to explain how vicarious reinforcement works within the context of social learning theory. Understand that it involves learning behaviours by observing others being rewarded or punished for those behaviours. Make sure you can provide examples such as how witnessing the punishment of a criminal can deter observers from engaging in similar behaviour. Then look at Cooper and Mackey, 1986. This is a named study in the specification, so you need to know it in detail. Be prepared to describe the aim of the study, which was to investigate the impact of aggressive video games on children's behaviour. Be familiar with the procedure. The study involved children playing either an aggressive or non-aggressive video game, or no game at all, followed by a behavioural measure of aggression. No, the findings. The results actually showed that playing aggressive video games did not increase aggressive behaviour in boys, but it did in girls. It suggests that the impact of media on aggression may be influenced by gender. Understand the conclusion as well, of course. The study concluded that the relationship between media and aggression is complex and may vary based on factors such as gender. And for the evaluation, be ready to discuss strengths like its controlled experimental design and limitations, such as the artificial setting and limited generalizability due to the small sample size. Also look at the role of positive role models in rehabilitation. Be able to explain how positive role models can be utilized in rehab programs to encourage pro-social behavior and reduce reoffending rates. Understand that role models demonstrate desirable behaviors which offenders can observe and emulate, fostering a more positive self-concept and social identity. Look at fines as a deterrent. Understand how fines function as a form of negative reinforcement by imposing a financial penalty for undesirable behaviour with the intention of deterring future offences. Be ready to evaluate their effectiveness, considering strengths like their immediate impact and ease of enforcement and limitations such as their varying impact based on an individual's financial situation and the potential for fines to disproportionately affect lower income offenders. Finally, look at the role of community sentences. Community sentences aim to rehabilitate offenders by requiring them to complete specific activities such as unpaid work, treatment programmes or curfews, allowing them to remain integrated within their communities while addressing the causes of their offending behaviour. Be prepared to discuss strengths such as their focus on rehabilitation and reducing reoffending by promoting social responsibility. Our next big paper on topic is psychological problems. So you want to explore key statistics about clinical depression first and foremost. Be prepared with an understanding of general trends in clinical depression, including its prevalence and variations across age, sex and ethnicity. While specific statistics change frequently, focus on overarching patterns such as higher prevalence rates in females compared to males and increased incidence during adolescence and early adulthood. Recovery rates can vary widely depending on access to treatment and support, so understand that while many people recover with the right interventions, some experience recurrent episodes. This foundational knowledge is going to help you contextualise the impact of depression on different demographic groups and evaluate treatment effectiveness. Think about the role of community care for those with mental health problems as well. Community care is vital in supporting individuals with mental health issues by providing localised services such as therapy, support groups and crisis intervention, while allowing them to remain integrated within their communities. Understand how a community care aims to promote recovery, reduce stigma and prevent hospitalisation. Be ready to discuss the benefits like improved social support and continuity of care and challenges such as resource limitations and inconsistent service provision across different regions. Evaluation should include how effective community care is in reducing relapse rates and enhancing quality of life for those with mental health problems. Look at psychological theory as well specifically the social drift theory of schizophrenia. Be prepared to explain the social drift theory, which suggests that people with schizophrenia tend to drift downwards in the social hierarchy due to their symptoms affecting their ability to maintain employment and social relationships. Understand the key idea that schizophrenia may result in social decline rather than being caused by low socioeconomic status. Be ready to evaluate the theory, considering strengths such as supporting evidence showing higher prevalence rates of schizophrenia in lower socioeconomic groups and limitations like the difficulty in establishing cause and effect as well as alternative explanations such as social causation theory, which suggests that low socioeconomic status may increase vulnerability to schizophrenia. Your last big paper one topic is research methods. Now, embrace research methods across both of the papers. You need to recognise that research methods content appears in both exam papers, not just paper one. You'll find dedicated research methods sections in both paper one and two, as well as questions appearing in the other topics as well. So always be ready. 
Familiarise yourself with examples of research and identify key elements such as hypotheses, variables, control measures, samples used, ethics and data collected. Exposure to different research scenarios is going to better prepare you for the new piece of research you'll face in the section. So use resources such as our predictive papers and walkthroughs to really strengthen your understanding and application of those research methods as well. OK, so that is paper one. Now let's move on to paper two, studies and applications in psychology two. So we know for this paper there are four sections in it. That's sleep and dreaming, social influence, memory and research methods. So let's start, of course, with section A, sleep and dreaming. You want to look at activation synthesis theory of dreaming. Be prepared to explain this theory, which posits that dreams result from the brain's attempt to make sense of random neural activity during REM sleep. Understand the implications of this theory for understanding the nature of dreams and be ready to evaluate strengths such as its scientific grounding and limitations like its value to account for the content of dreams. Revise the role of the pineal gland and melatonin as well. Know how the pineal gland produces melatonin, a hormone that regulates sleep-wake cycles. Be able to discuss how light exposure influences melatonin secretion and understand the significance of melatonin in maintaining circadian rhythms, including the consequences of disrupted melatonin production on sleep patterns. You'll also want to explore Freud 1918, The Wolfman Study. Then explore Freud 1918, The Wolfman Study. You want to familiarise yourself with this case study of the Wolfman, which explores the interpretation of dreams as a window into the unconscious mind. Be prepared to discuss how Freud's insights on the symbolic nature of dreams and how this study exemplifies his theories on dream analysis and psychosexual development. And just finally, on sleep and dreaming, you also want to look into neurological damage to the hypothalamus and impact on sleep. Be ready to discuss how damage to the hypothalamus can lead to sleep disorders such as insomnia or hypersomnia and the broader implications for mental health and daily functioning. Section B is social influence. And here you want to look first at authoritarian personality. Be prepared to define the authoritarian personality, which is a personality type characterised by rigidity, conforming to traditional values and hostility towards out groups. You should be able to explain how these with an authoritarian personality experience obedience and how they react to orders from other people. Revise Bickman 1970 as well. Familiarise yourself with the aim of Bickman's study, which investigated the effects of uniform on obedience. Be prepared to describe the procedure where participants were approached by individuals in different attire, a civilian, a guard and a milkman, who asked them to perform tasks. Know the findings which showed that individuals were more likely to obey requests from those in uniform, highlighting the influence of perceived authority on compliance. Evaluation should include strengths like the controlled experimental design and limitations such as the artificial setting, which may not reflect real life scenarios. It's important to note here that there were three experiments in the study, one, two and three. Most questions will focus on experiment one, but don't forget to revise two and three as well. Look at minority influence leading to social change too. Understand the process of minority influence, which occurs when a smaller group influences the beliefs of the behaviours of a larger group. Be ready to discuss the key factors that contribute to successful minority influence, such as consistency, commitment and flexibility. Now, moving on to section C, we've got memory. Revisit the multi-store model of memory. Be prepared to explain the multi-store model of memory proposed by Atkinson and Schifrin in 1968, which suggests that memory consists of three stores, sensory memory, short term memory and long term memory. Understand the characteristics of each store, including their duration and capacity, and be ready to discuss how information is transferred between them. Evaluation should include strengths, like its clear structure, and limitations, such as its oversimplification of memory processes. You want to look at the Clive Wearing case study as well. Familiarise yourself with this study of Clive Wearing, a musician who suffered from profound amnesia due to a viral infection. Be prepared to describe how his condition illustrates the distinction between procedural memory, which he retains, and declarative memory, which he loses. Understand the significance of his case for memory research and be ready to evaluate the insights it provides into the workings of memory systems, considering strengths like the real world application of findings and limitations such as the uniqueness of his case, limiting generalizability. Finally here, look at autobiographical advertising. Understand the concept of this kind of advertising, which refers to marketing strategies that evoke personal memories to influence consumer behaviour. Be ready to discuss how this type of advertising can create emotional connections with consumers by triggering nostalgia. 
And last, but certainly not least, we've got section D of research methods. Embrace these methods across both papers, because like I said, with paper one, research methods appear in both. So don't underestimate it. Don't ignore it. Now, best of luck with your exam.